Hi, Doug Binks here with another look at the Avoid Editor prototype. So one of the things I recently did was change the Add tool so that when you use a small amount, it works much better in the continuous mode with Collide On. So if we uh, look at that, if I start growing something, it now works such that the growth occurs slowly and though it comes towards you, the um, it does so in units of one voxel rather than in units of the size of the cube that you choose. You can still increase that you like. You can add to the offset so that it throws itself further. But um, with the offset to none, you get a nice steady increase with the, uh, the amount that you're adding, slowly building up and then pulling towards you. And if you use the non-continuous mode, you can get nice control over this. The other thing that I've changed is a new camera mode. So here we're using a first person camera, which is useful for moving through worlds. But let's say I wanted to load a smaller world. So I'll do that now. I'll uh, load, let me save any changes. I'm gonna load um, something that was actually made in Magical Voxel. So these are, are small objects. It shows this uh, sword character, and it's a bit of a way away. So what I'm going to do is to switch to the arc ball camera, and then I'm going to center my arc ball, and then move away. And what we have now is um, an arc ball. An arc ball basically is a camera which is centered on a particular position, and which rotates around that position. As you move the mouse with the W and the D, moving you forwards and backwards. And you can use again the shift will accelerate that and the Q and the E keys will rotate around the axis of view. You can also set your position to anything you want. So you can set that uh, position to zero. And now my, my position where I'm rotating around is offset or you can set it to some other value. Um, Eventually, I'd like to make this so you can just select a position. It won't take me too long to do that, but I haven't done it yet. And then, of course, uh, if we load a slightly larger object, um, see if I can find. Here we go, Monument Valley. And let's uh, option camera I center the outball again. So I can move away from that. And so this is uh, another Magic of Voxel asset that I've uh, downloaded from EPH Tracy. And uh, again, we can see that this uh, is nice arc ball allowing us to move around and, uh, and, and make various edits to this uh, object. You can also see that if we show the materials here that there's now this Vox material, which is the palette loaded from Vox, Magical Voxel palette. This is the old style palettes. And I'm not sure that we'll be able to fully support the new materials, um, but we'll be able to support some parts of them. Uh, but I haven't done that and won't do that for a little bit of time. Again, all of the other materials are, are there. There's um, uh, many more palpable materials than we actually have present. And as you can see in the previous video, you can add materials to create new ones. So another thing we're gonna look at now is the ability to add constraints. So if I make a new world, I'm gonna save these changes and I add a plane constraint. Here what we have is a plane constraint on the X axis. And I'm gonna go into the set mode and I'm gonna choose uh, maybe this silver. And now what happens is that when I construct things, they are constrained to be on this plane. I'm gonna, I'm, I've still got the uh, arc ball camera on, which is not that useful in this mode. So I'll turn off the arc ball camera. So basically I can, I can you know, draw what I want and it's always gonna be on this, this plane. That large block you saw was basically the LOD system uh, um, temporarily showing a, a low level LOD of, uh, of an edit. Again, this is quite useful when you're using continuous mode and then you can pull, if you want to, you could then take the constrained position here, move that forwards and then make another layer. I'm not uh, artist enough to make this uh, look really brilliant, but uh, I think you can see the possibilities for basically pulling that layer up and building layer by layer if you want. 
I'm going to take a collision continuous mode off for a while, and I'm going to take that uh, plane constraint off. You can have that in in X, Y, and Z, and or in. Now I'm going to look at symmetry. So symmetry is something that gives us the possibility to um, basically create something and have it such that it makes itself symmetric. So again, I'm going to start with a new level, um, and I'm going to this position back to something that's about 100 in front of me. So now when I make that block there, what you'll see is that that's also appearing on the other side. So as I build things here, they get built symmetrically on this other side. And we can add as many planes as we want of symmetry. So now as I'm adding that new plane of symmetry in, it's not only making it symmetric on one plane, but it's also making it symmetric on the other. It's only making the additions that we make symmetric, so you're not seeing it uh, copying the old content. Although if you were to use copy and paste, again, that would do so. Symmetry can also be used alongside with the constraints. So here if I freeze this level, take the symmetry planes off for the moment, put on the plane constraint. So again, plane constraint allows me to draw on this plane. Very nice when you're in continuous mode. So that I just uh, make a new level. And then now we're going to have, so since we've got the plane constraint on the X, we'll probably want the symmetry to be on the Y. So I can move this symmetry plane backwards and forwards. So let's just keep it there for the moment, so 45. And here, basically, if I uh, draw something, then we can see that we've got the symmetric version of that over there. Very terrible high, isn't it? Of course, this is uh, perfect for writing things like uh, red rum. Doesn't quite come across as murder, does it? <laughs> but, uh... Okay, and that finishes it for today's look at the Avoid Editor toolset.